Um, we will uh, come back from closed session and convene open session at this time. Um, and if we'd first like to report out on items that were, we'd first like to report out on items that um, had reportable action on the closed session agenda, and those are the three items: uh, 4A, 4D, and 4E, regarding. Agenda item 4A, Holloway um, versus Showcase Realty and others. The board has authorized its general counsel three to zero to initiate settlement discussions. On item 4D, DeBert versus SLVWD, the board voted three to zero to authorize its counsel to file an amendment to its cross complaint that named Scarborough Lumber and Building Supply Incorporated as a cross defendant in the case by DeBert against the district. And on item 4E, the political lawsuit, the potential lawsuit, I cor uh, correct myself, injunction, potential lawsuit for injunction against Director Smallman, the board voted three to zero to authorize the following update. The district provided a draft letter to Director Smallman on March 2nd, and Director Smallman said he would try to send back his draft by today. The district did not receive a draft from Director Smallman, nor was he present for closed session, and no further action can be taken at this time. Um, this is the time for oral communications uh, on items that are not on tonight's agenda. Um, I have one speaker slip uh, from Rick Moran, um, but if anybody would like to address us at this time, please do so. Rick Moran, Ben Mulvey. I'm here to set the record straight. I was appointed to the Environmental Committee in 2016. Two years earlier, a grand jury investigation concluded that there was a breach of trust between citizens and the Water District. Their report, titled A Time to Restore Trust Between Voters and the District, said that more than two board members on a committee could pose a Brown Act violation, so the third spot was filled with a citizen member. A board member said that serving on the committee was a privilege. It is. I volunteered for the Environmental Committee to help restore that trust because I have a history of collaborating well with others. The Environmental Committee discussed many issues, but when they decided to use Roundup, a known probable carcinogenic herbicide, in our watershed, I was concerned. The item appeared on the board agenda with little public awareness tucked inside the details of a broom management plan. Ratepayers would want to know, so I notified the public. That ended any meaningful dialogue because I am not a rubber stamp. Committee meetings are public and don't contain privileged information. The public has a right to know. The committee and the board began sidestepping around me. The committee was tasked to create a pest management plan and still doesn't have one. Meetings were canceled and I wasn't notified. Then, speaking about round, when speaking about Roundup, I and others were dismissively told by this board that we were emotional or responding from the gut. The science of Roundup is shady. It is not peer-reviewed. It is corporate-sponsored, corrupt, and lacks consensus among the scientific community. That's not emotional. That's a fact. The public response about Roundup was impressive. But the many attendees were told that it wasn't on the agenda. I have an email chain showing that it was to be on the agenda, but it was suddenly removed. I received a rude email from the district manager and chastised by a board member who in front of a packed room said that she didn't trust me. Let's talk about trust. I served honorably in the Navy, navigating a nuclear-powered submarine into Vietnam and Russia. Count country and shipmates trusted me. As a teacher and life lab instructor for the SLV schools, parents and students trusted me. As post commander and trustee for the Santa Cruz Veterans of Foreign Wars, veterans in the community trust me. But this is really about you. This board will never gain public trust by using poisons on our watershed. Your business is to provide safe and affordable water. Repair our infrastructure. Stop worrying about French broom on an abandoned sand mine. Get back to basics. That's how to regain trust. Thank you. Um, 
Anybody else? I agree all the way from the street. I, you know, I, I just heard this uh, report out of closed session, and I just want to make it clear. Uh, my understanding of my lawsuit is that I'm asking nothing of the district, including no attorney's fees paid for by the district. Everything I ask for is to be paid for by private parties. So I don't know what the district can offer me since I'm asking nothing. Um, it's really up to Showcase Realty Agents, Inc. to settle this case. So I, the words you said sound rather meaningless to me. If, if you think you're gonna pay your general counsel you know, some thousands of dollars to negotiate with me, um, I have already asked nothing, and nothing, and nothing uh, from nothing is nothing. And there's nothing that you can offer me to settle this case. Would anybody else like to speak during all communication? Sir? Good evening. Uh, thanks for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. My name is Brian DeVore. I'm with the Pack Four Consulting Group. We're a civil engineering firm up in Pleasanton, California. Um, I made the trek down here tonight because I'm a, an acquaintance with uh, Bill Smallin, who uh, is district engineer for four water districts on the peninsula. We've uh, had the pleasure of working with Bob, uh, Bill when he was with Lewis and Tibbetts, and uh, we just recently heard about the San Lorenzo Valley Water District and your capital improvement needs. And I wanted to come down and introduce myself and our firm. And uh, we're looking forward to potentially uh, proposing uh, on your upcoming projects. So thank you. Thank you. Good Hello. Outstanding people who are citizen members of these committees, and um, they always deserve a thank you. I would like the board to I want to draw attention to the letter that you have in your packet tonight. It's a letter asking again about the Montego projects that are included in the um, assessment district. This has been discussed at length. You've kicked it around quite a lot, and my letter is specifically asking for something different. Not to kick it around, but to come up with qualitative information and reports in a manner that addresses what the original agreement was of doing all these things within a five-year construction window. This is how all the cost estimates were placed and what we voted on. We in Lompico wanted these projects done. For instance, we had two tanks, the, the Lewis and the Katsky tanks, that were, we were told by the state had to be replaced by, I believe it was December 2014 originally. So we're behind schedule on that. Both tanks are leaking. We thought that by joining SLV and forming this assessment district, SLV said we have the management power to get these projects done and meet these deadlines. We're two years into the assessment district and being members of SLV, and only and absolutely no projects have been completed We've been partially on one. The front project that is being worked on is the lowest print. So I would like you to consider putting on the agenda the possibility of imagining how we would meet this goal of getting all these projects done within the next, within five years or already two years into it. We're gonna to have to negotiate this. We're gonna to have to come up with some imaginative solutions. What I'm asking for is for this to go on an agenda, but not like the agenda item that was in January under unfinished business, Lompico District Assessment District loans. There were no staff reports. There was nothing to back it up. There was nothing new to talk about. I want something new to talk about. I want something vital to talk about. In this manager's report, it says that for today, you said, say you're gonna be working on PRVs and service laterals, again, we're talking about the two lowest ranking projects. The highest ranking project is the inner tide. That is a vital public health and safety issue for all of us in Long Pico, 500 plus customers. It's our, it is our only water supply at this time. 
So, um, I have a lot of other stuff, but I'm running out of time. I hope that somebody will uh, put this on the agenda and we'll get talking about something real this time. Thank you. Thank you. I see somebody coming to the lectern. Well, I had several things I wanted to say to Director Hammer, and he isn't here, um, but I'll send to manager, if I may, President Lockman. On May 25th, 2017, WSC was uh, tasked with a $60,000 project for State Revolving Fund and USDA. Now they they didn't they only spent part of that, but what I'm getting at is in December December 7th, I asked their general manager what happened when. When the board voted to spend $274,230 um, with WSC to get a USDA loan, I asked what happened to the $60,000. Well, I didn't get an answer, but later in the meeting, Eric Hammer said that $60,000 was for Long Pico. Uh-uh. I invite you to go back to May 25th and look at the proposal. Long Pico is named, but it wasn't just for Long Pico. And a couple of members of the Long Pico assess, um, Oversight Committee got really excited. Oh, wow, you're going to start our projects. You could have easily, well, I could get maybe you didn't want to embarrass him by saying, no, you're wrong. Director Hammer, and you didn't say anything. Okay. The other thing, when I went to the Santa Margarita groundwater meeting, that attorney brought up that the board can respond in in public comment to the person commenting. And I would like to know, and you don't have to tell me tonight, but I'd like to know how many people were given this Waters of Long Pico. And I would like two board members, Eric Hammer and, and uh, <coughs> uh, the, our president, uh, to meet with me and talk about this. Because there are so many things wrong in this that are out now why. And I would like you the two of you to meet with me, I would like you to listen to what I have to say and not you control the meeting. Let me tell you what I see, what's wrong with this. And I don't, I want this not to be passed out until it's fixed or spread. Thank you. Thank you. Um, anybody else like to speak to our communication? about developing our own generation capacity. Uh, saying that, um, you guys know I've, I've brought forward the idea of uh, some serious wind turbines up on the, up on the uh, Empire Grade where, we, where the water district owns land, where we own land for, um, for the purpose of generating electricity, eliminating our carbon footprint and providing much needed green energy for our county. Um, I think we can get the county behind this. I would like to see a little more uh, 
maybe some feelers put out by the board or by our uh, Mr. Lee there to see about uh, how the county supervisors feel about it. Um, trying to send them some emails myself and, and get an appointment uh, with Bruce McPherson so we can talk about these things. Anyway, um, once again, talk to a lot of people. People are proud of you. So, thank you. <coughs> thank you. Anybody else who would like to speak during oral communications this evening? I see no uh, one raising their hand. So I'll close out oral communications at this time and move to new business. Um, <clears throat> the first item on new business is the San Lorenzo Valley Water District con conjunctive use planning process. And I would um, just like staff to take it from here and tell us about you. Um, John Rucker's here today from the Santa Cruz County Environmental Health Department of the Water Resources Division Director. <clears throat> He's going to be giving a presentation. I'm going to plug it in. Jen, can you push the button for me over there for this to be sign? Yes. Okay. I apologize for uh, for sitting down up here. I threw my back out this week, so I can't really stand for very long. So the, the district folks gave me a seat, <laughs> which I appreciate. Um, well, Jen's getting that set up, I'll, I'll just go ahead and start. This is a, a brief overview of a project, a grant-funded project that's being done uh, between the district and the county. Uh, half of it's grant funds and half of it is matching funds to uh, support the efforts. This comes out of uh, Proposition 1, which is the, the water bond we all approved. <coughs> Fair while ago, but it's taken the state a while to push all the money out. And this this money is coming through the stream flow enhancement portion of that of that act, uh, funded by the uh, the Wildlife Conservation Board. A uh, little overview on this on the screen screen. This is a conjunctive use and base flow enhancement plan. So we're looking at, at ways to better uh, manage the watershed resources in a way that both serves the water supply needs. And also will result in increase, ideally increasing base flow in the streams for our fish, which is really what the objective of the funding effort is. Um, the county uh, applied for and received the grant working closely with the district, and a lot of the money will now turn around and go through the district to, uh, to conduct the work and, and hire the consultants. But it, it is a joint effort going forward. So the, the grant is uh, $330,000. some maps to work through. We're really looking at how do we uh, help the district manage their stream sources and their groundwater sources in a way to complement uh, the use of those. The district already does a fair amount of that in their north system. Uh, the district has both wells and stream sources and they're able to shift back and forth uh, between those two sources to, to pretty good advantage. But we want to bring in the uh, Belton system, the Fall Creek system, and also the South South system, which serves parts of the Scotts Valley area. You can see the diversion points on the west side of Benwell Mountain are the uh, are on the uh, or, is it green or blue over there, and uh, then some of the wells over in Trail Hollow and Olympia. Go ahead, Ben. Just some of the geology, Benwell Mountain, which has our streams, is all granitic. It has pretty good base flow much of the year, pretty good storage and capture base flow. Uh, then across the middle and fall, all that yellow area is primarily the San Margarita groundwater basin, which captures and stores groundwater for a much uh, longer period. Uh, so again, the wells are drawing from the San Margarita, the stream diversions are coming from, from Ben Lowen Mountain. Go ahead. North system, Felton system, and then the south, south system is the next one, I think. And basically, as you know, we, uh, the local agencies got a grant a number of years ago to connect, construct inner ties between all these different systems. Those inner ties were designed for emergency purposes, 
uh, and the understanding and sort of the promise was they couldn't be used on a regular basis until we did the more detailed assessment about what the environmental impacts would be and what the uh, water rights issues would be with actually using those inner ties on a regular basis. The pipes are there, but we need the information to really uh, support using those pipes on a more regular basis. Go ahead, Jim. And this just shows the south system. We've got both San Lorenzo Valley Water District wells and Scotts Valley Water District wells very close together. Scotts Valley Water District is the red area. San Lorenzo is the purple area. So we're also, they're drawing from the same part of the Santa Margarita groundwater basin. So we're also looking at, uh, some of the scenarios we're looking at would involve also uh, potentially transferring water again through the inner tide to the Scotts Valley Water District to allow them to pump their wells less and allow the groundwater to stay in the basin and actually increase the groundwater storage. The overall idea is you would use excess water from the stream sources during the winter time when there's <coughs> more available than the district currently developed currently diverts and more flow than the fish really need at that time of year and, uh, and shift that surface water uh, to the south part of the system and also uh, potentially use it in Scotts Valley. You can to let those groundwater basins fill up, have more water in them, and then during the summer there would be more groundwater available, shift more to the wells earlier and leave more water in the streams, particularly Fall Creek. Uh, to support the fish. So that's the, the basic concept of the conjunctive use. There's also, the district also has a water right uh, to store water in Loch Lomond, which they have not been able to utilize, and we would be looking at possible use of that. Go ahead. So these are some of the scenarios that we would be evaluating in this project, uh, transferring uh, water um, from Felton and up to the south system during the winter time. Um, and possibly also bringing water from the north system and to Felton um, uh, and transfer that again to the south system where the groundwater basin can be covered. Uh, and it really should, should say Felton, it should not say Felton Diversion. Felton Diversion Dam is the, uh, the city of Santa Cruz facility and that would not be involved. It would be the Fall Creek Diversion, Fall Creek, Gold Creek, Bank Creek portion of the Felton system. Another option is to look at the Loch Lomond water right. There's 313 acre feet. Um, that would require treatment to use that water, so we'd be looking at the feasibility of that. Um, looking at recharging the Olympia area, you know, not just the South Scotts Valley area, South System, but also Olympia to be able to build up the groundwater storage there to make those Olympia wells potentially more productive during the, the dry season, reduce the stream diversions, uh, and then also looking at the potential for, for providing in the water to Scotts Valley to get them to reduce their pumping and again benefit that south system area. Um, so the project has several components that we're moving ahead. Most of this work will be done by consultants. Uh, the first part is really doing the surface water availability analysis. How much more water is available that's not being used right now? And that's going to look at things like uh, downstream flow needs, uh, <coughs> how effective the diversions are, how much water is being bypassed right now. Uh, and the, the next item on the agenda is actually a contract to hire a hydrology firm to do that work for us. Um, and a lot of it, and it just happens that the principal or, or the main person in that firm is Mick Johnson, who has done a lot of this for the district already, and we're pulling that together in a way that works in this project. Uh, we're also looking at hiring a fisheries biologist to help us evaluate the impacts of these different scenarios on fish flows. If, if we are able to increase the flow, say in Fall Creek, Clear Creek, or Boulder Creek, uh, potentially the main stem of the San Lorenzo River during the summertime, what kind of benefits would we expect from that? If, and if we're able to increase flows in the streams draining the Santa Margarita, uh, like Bean Creek, Zianni Creek, uh, Love Creek, would there be benefits from that fishery benefit? So once we have that information, we put that together into a, a plan that may be a phase plan, multiple phases. Uh, we would conduct the environmental review of that uh, as we would, you know, as we need to do to be able to use those inner ties, and also develop the uh, water rights applications to to do what needs to be done to be able to move that surface water around. For instance, right now, uh, to use water from Fall Creek in, in the south part of the system, we need to amend that water right to expand the. the place of use for that water. 
So that's sort of the overall project in, the, in a nutshell. Uh, we will be bringing different parts of this back to your board. Um, we do need to uh, amend the agreement between the county and the district in the future because for now the district is taking more of a lead in, in doing some of this hiring so that, that money will go directly to the district instead of coming through the county. Um, and we're also going to be uh, bringing to your board the, uh, the contracts for these consulting services for approval. And of course, providing reports back on progress as this thing moves forward. So that's it for, for my presentation. I'd be happy to, to answer any questions. There's no action recommended at, on this particular item yet. Yeah, on the next one. Um, I'd first like to take any input from the board who uh, Okay, any directors have? All very self-explanatory. Okay. Um, I, I, I guess I, before I go to the public, just a brief uh, amount of discussion. I, how does this fit in with the Sustainable Groundwater Management Act? It fits in, I think, very well. I mean, as you know, we're doing all, there's all these different moving pieces. This is one of those moving pieces. Uh, we're developing the groundwater sustainability plan for the Santa Margarita Basin. And uh, the objective of that is to make that basin sustainable, restore the groundwater levels, and it also supports stream base flows for fish also. So we'll be, this information will help feed into the, the development of that plan. There is a component of this that does use the Santa Margarita groundwater model to uh, project what the impacts on the basin would be from these different pumping scenarios, and also what the impact would be on increased base flow in the stream. So this will help to support that effort. Okay. Um, I'll ask one more. I mean, if anybody else, please, please try. Okay, um, interrupt me. Um, I have some idea that okay, being in this GSA with another major member agency, Scotts Valley Water District, that we'll end up both having responsibilities, okay, for various uh, actions to be taken that help recover the basin. And this, this looks very much like one, okay, that is very um, helpful for the basin. Um, in this process that we're getting to that, how do, um, do we sort of get credit for doing this in some way? Um, how, do, how do we look at this in terms of the general longer term goal of getting to a groundwater system. Well, I think you plan. do get credit for this. I mean, this would be something that <coughs> will most likely be folded into the groundwater sustainability plan as something your district is doing to make more surface water available when it is available without any significant adverse impacts and helping to respect the base in that way. Um, this also is a part of the memorandum of agreement that uh, we all San Lorenzo watershed and the Santa Margarita groundwater base. We're, this is really broader. We're looking at both the surface water and the overall watershed as well as the groundwater basin, whereas the groundwater basin efforts focuses primarily on the on that basin. Thank you. Other other board input before um, let me open it up to the public. I, I believe um, the woman on the second row uh, has first had her hand up. Um, so you have a grant for 330 and then a contributing matching grant of 285, so that's 615. Is that for this first phase through 2019? Yes. So it's just for the, all the assessment and the planning and the environmental uh, evaluations and things like that? That's correct. This is what's called a planning grant. This will set the stage for us to go back for an implementation grant to actually you know, do the treatment plan upgrades or some of the pumping upgrades to uh, to actually implement this. Some of it could be implemented right now with the existing infrastructure, but some of it would require other infrastructure. So how long does this process actually take? If this if it's the middle, not even the middle of twenty eighteen and the assessment is just gonna it's gonna take you through the end of twenty nineteen, how many more phases are there and how much more time are we looking at? Well that's hard to predict, um, particularly when you're dealing with water rights adjustments with the state. They can take anywhere from two years to twenty years to get your water rights. Square. Well, I should say, could as less as low as six months to, to twenty years. So that's a big factor is getting the water rights uh, squared away. And six months is extremely optimistic, and that's really using just a temporary change in water rights. Um, the state hopefully is stepping up to make more to improve these 
processes. But they would. So we could we could start doing some of this when we have the water rights and the environmental review done. We could start moving water. Either. But at this point, it's turning the valves. I mean, Brian may have there may be a little more to it than that in terms of some pump upgrades. But it, it's parts of it are relatively simple. Other parts would require more infrastructure improvements. And, and just one last question. Um, just so this is this is a more than a year and a half, and it's six hundred fifteen thousand. If you were to give us your educated guess, because I know you don't have numbers off the top of your head, how much more money over the next? Let's assume twenty years. How, how much more money would this project cost to complete? I couldn't tell you. Have you been a guess? That's an educated guess. <laughs> <laughs> I, I haven't even tried to guess. We did do so. There are other studies that have looked at some of the components of conjunctive use, not this particular one, but some of the, like the water transfers, say, from City of Santa Cruz to Soquel, and there were cost figures in there, but uh, I don't have those figures available to me right now. Okay. But we, we can try to look at it. One of the things that will come out of this plan will be a cost estimate. Mm -hmm. I mean, so it'll be the recommendations on what are the various phases and what it would take to do that. And Excuse me, President Fulton. May I ask everyone to please step up to the um, left turn to speak? That way we can hear the question as well as the answer. Thank you. service several cities and the county and uh, they're doing toilet to tap as they refer to it uh, they're building a, a plant right now that will treat sewage to the point where they can inject it into aquifers and then draw it back out again and use it as drinking water so uh, you know just the the uh, weather differences between here and uh, what is it 40 miles south of Gives you an idea of how extreme this situation has reached. I'm sure all, all of you are aware of it already. Uh, I just wanted to point out that the city of Santa Cruz has this HCP, which has been hanging for, I think, 16 years. And until that water rights, it's, a, and it's essentially a water diversion issue with the, national, with the federal government. Until that's resolved, no one will know how much water they can take at uh, Henry Cowell or Tate Street. And it's going to tangle everybody up. Discuss Valley now that everybody's is plumbed together. So hopefully it doesn't stop progress from happening. I, I would hope the city would finally cut a deal. They're close. Are they? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Mr. Ritter, uh, two or three years ago I was going to the Santa Margarita Basin meetings on a regular basis. And when he mentioned uh, toilet to faucet, uh, that was one of the things I wanted to bring up because it's, was it the Hanson, Hanson quarry where they were going to, mm -hmm. that Scotts Valley was going to try to do that, make the water more pure than what we get out of the ground right now and, and put it back into the aquifer? And it seemed the other things I saw, they, they, it looked like they had these space age machines that could grab water out of the river as it's roaring by and put it in the ground. Am I crazy? Could I see that? <laughs> um, those are some, some options that have been studied and considered. Um, either, I, mean, I don't know about the space age machines, but uh, they are looking at, at ways to take high flows from the river itself. Uh, bank, bank collectors is something they're called where they actually just infiltration gallery along yeah. the bank so it filters through the bank and then they can pump cleaner water because the, you know often the water during the winter time is very turbid so that, that is one way of I mean that's one thing that's still being under under consideration 
Scotts Valley Water District did look at using purified uh, recycled water. Uh, at this point, that looks to be relatively expensive compared to some of the other alternatives, so that's sort of, that's not being pursued actively right now. And probably nobody's going to want to drink. Well, there's that, too. <laughs> <laughs> Hard to convince them. Thank you. Well, it's John Souls from Felton again. Uh, well, there's a few things, and with this study money, it would be really nice to study a couple things that I think, from all of the time I've spent looking at some of these things. So Bull Creek, I think we're going to fix Bull Creek ourselves, but that should really be top priority itself. Now, the overdraft of Fall Creek has been going on since Citizens Utilities. American Water overdrafted it constantly, and when we had Felton Flow, we used to throw that up. Oh, they're overdrafting. And now we still overdraft Fall Creek because we have to. Now, it would be really nice to see Bull Creek get fixed so we can help alleviate some of that. And in a course of action, maybe even be able to free up a little more water for the fish so that there'd be a little more water from another location. Now, when I take a look at this study and the recharge system, one of the things, and I hate to say it out loud, is people with wells. How do we know how much water they're using? Now, I wouldn't advocate us charging people with wells for the water, but they should have to meter it. And that metering should be studied so that we know what we need to do to meet the recharge standards. And then, Loch Lomond, we have all that acre feet of Loch Lomond when it's available. And it's my thought <coughs> that we should take Loch Lomond water build a treatment plant up in Long Pico, <coughs> move that water over to Long Pico for treatment, and then from there, either use it in Loch Lomond or find a way to move the excess down and use it uh, and, and put it into an injection well or something. Or just run it out on the ground in the Olympia and it'll soak it down. But the idea is that we have that water available to us and we need to find a way to move it. And I don't see moving it all the way down to Felton is advantageous. I think it really makes a lot more sense to, to do the study to see that water go over to Long Pico. They need it. There'd be less pumping uphill from down and down at the rest of the system. And that would be really good. And I also really encourage the San Lorenzo Valley Water District, and I know you're already busy, but I'd really like to see you guys take charge of a lot of this groundwater recharge, be a leader in our county on this, because our little utopia up here in the valley is really special, and someday they're going to come for our water if we don't do things to make sure they have water. Thanks. <coughs> I've been reading about the kind of $30,000 this is like the first time I've heard about the 285. So the 285 was a condition to, it was matching funds. We had to pledge that in order to uh, secure the 330. Correct. Um, and there's a, there's a $45,000 difference there. So it's not being matched one for one. There's no, it's not a 50% it's not a match, it's a 40% match. And did we know that? I mean, I guess you, you applied for the grant and everything, but I don't remember reading about this or anything. How, how, did, how did everybody know about this? Did the board know about this? I believe they did, you know. Okay. It, was part, it was part of the grant application. It was part of the grant application. And again, the, the 285 is essentially um, projects that the district was already either in progress or planning to do anyway, but could be shown to benefit stream based flow and benefit this project. So it's not new money that the district is spending. They're getting credit for money they're already spending. So I heard you say that you have cost estimates for, for moving water from uh, Santa Cruz to Soquel. And I just want to say I'm not really interested in that at all because right. I don't live in Santa Cruz and I don't live in Soquel. And I don't really want this district or the people who live in SLV to have to spend millions of dollars. In that um, 
The 313 acre feet up there in Walk Roman per year has been going for 35 years. I don't know. That's a horrendous amount. Probably, if I added all that up, it's probably the entire deficit in the Santa Margarita Aquifer. Um, but we have, you know, it's going to cost millions and millions of dollars to treat that water for this district to treat that water. It would be a, 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 a substantial investment. Uh, currently, I think. Uh, the de facto state of affairs is that Santa Cruz is using that water as if it were theirs. Uh, they don't need to worry about paying us 313 a year in any form. So uh, I think we are really uh, doing a lot for the city of Santa Cruz just to let them use that water as they've been using it for such a long time. Um, this district um, merged with Long Pico. I think it's been a little bit over two years now. And uh, last time I checked, Long Pico County Water District had a water right on the Long Pico Creek. And um, I don't think this district really planned to use it. But it could be a bargaining chip with uh, Fish and Wildlife. And, um, you know, I think that water right's still in the name of Long Pico County Water District. I don't think anybody in management here has bothered to um, get off their hands or their butt and uh, convert that water right to something that's owned by SLB Water District. And then I think there's probably a couple of years worth of usage reports that should have been made. I assume it's zero. Um, but those reports are being neglected by management. Doesn't seem to know the value of what they have. I'm going to think of one more thing as soon as I sit down. Um, oh, so in this room uh, a few years ago, somebody stood up and they said, why don't you build a highway and only drive on it two weeks a year? And so the millions of dollars that the state invested in inner ties and the millions of dollars that this district invested in inner ties to Felton, to Scotts Valley, are not being used. And, um, we need to figure out how to use the millions, how to use the investment we've already made. Sure, Mr. Lee, but did you want to speak after the case? No, I was just kind of just no. Okay. Go ahead. No. <laughs> no, I, I, I believe he was had wanted to. Go ahead, Mark. Hi, I'm Mark Lee from Denmark. Regarding the uh, this current agenda item, uh, I have no problem with the study being conducted. Uh, my concern, though, is really the weakness of the memorandum of agreement. I don't think it should have been signed by any of you in, in, in the way it was drafted. I think there's a lot of holes in it with the, if you look at it closely, uh, my concern, one, is there's a linkage with the city of Santa Cruz. I think I've echoed this many, many times. That leaves a door open for additional uh, inner tide work down Graham Hill eventually to the city of Santa Cruz. But let's look at some statistics. Right now, the city of Santa Cruz is using 1.6 million gallons per day from the San Lorenzo water, uh, the tributary. That's from that surface water. Don't let this be fool. Don't let this fool you. Sure, the conjunctive use and and reducing the drawdown of wells in Scotts Valley is important. I have no problem with inner tying. Uh, I like the agreement of inner tying the districts uh, with our district one, two, and three, the south part and the north part. My concern is diverting water from Bowl and, and uh, uh, the creek that's adjacent to it, uh, where the library is, uh, to add additional water resources that's already being violated to the city. And uh, my biggest concern is long term, if there's questions regarding amending the water rights. I have some major problems with that. And I think people ought to be aware of where we're heading. This is not really for fish. This is for real estate development that will eventually fill up this valley and also Santa Cruz. Let's get real. Okay? Think about the long-term implications. Now, I'm okay with the grant for $331,000 to do the study. That's, a, that's an important step. But we, we need to look at the long-range motivations on why we are trying to go to a regional water system. I think you really ought to look at this. Because when we have a drought here 
and that water is already being submitted down the, the river to Santa Cruz, it's going to be less and less water for us here, and the cost will go up. You think you have high costs now? You haven't seen anything. We are lucky, we are lucky to have rain this season to recharge the aquifer. My concern is the way the memorandum agreement is written, there's a lot of holes and it leaves us in a very precarious position. And I think we should readdress that. And my major concern, I think we should amend it and really take the voting right off away off the Santa Margarita Regional Water uh, Basin Board and ask the city to leave. They're not inside of our district. Sure, they have an ancillary right of 313 acre feet from uh, Loch Lomond. But uh, my concern is the long-term implications. Thank you. Would anybody else like to comment? I see no more hands up, so um, I'll conclude that. Um, any more discussion from staff or board at this time? Then I'll thank John for coming. Appreciate it. Um, look forward to seeing you at a well, I'm not, I'm not leave it. Uh, I, I, oh, you may okay. have questions for me on some of the other items. Oh, well, so I'll just uh, make them nine. Okay, good. <laughs> good. You have your chance, John. Well, I'm going to thank you. <laughs> okay, um, let's move on to item 9B, the exponent contract for San Lorenzo Valley Water uh, Availability Assessment. Um, All right. Jen? Mm -hmm. um, hi. Um, so we flew an RFP for, this is associated, this is exactly what John was just introducing as this conjunctive use grant, and so now we're in the process of hiring um, consultants to, to do some of the analysis. So the first consultant that we flew the RFP for recently was for the hydro, hydrology consultant. And, um, and so we have reviewed the submittals and we have chosen exponent as our, as, as our recommendation to uh, enter into contact with them. They, um, exponents, well, the grant covers about $60,000 for this hydrological assessment. And um, exponents proposal was $75,000. And so it's about $15,000 over. And we negotiated that and found about um, six or $7,000 that might be able to um, be covered by another aspect of the grant by, um, in, the, in the section that's around um, the final plan preparation. We might have extra funding to cover. This um, exponent will be helping to produce the final plan, and so that line item might be able to be shifted over and covered by another portion of the grant. Um, if not, then the district might need to cover a portion of that. So at most, the district might need to come up with $15,000 in order to fund Exponent. Um, and I wanted to say that the reason why we chose S Exponent is because Nick Johnson is the hydrologist working there. He'll be the lead for, from Exponent, and he has been preparing water um, hydrological analyses for the district for 20 plus years and has provided the district a great service. He's, he's um, very loyal to this district and this community and I think he really serves this community well. And so um, I wanted to just briefly cover what the, what the proposal included for this hydrological assessment. Um, the, t the first task would be to develop a database or, so that they can take all of the water data, well data, and surface water data and put it into one database so that they can more easily um, take multiple parameters and compare them so they can get a good assessment from the data. And the next task will be to estimate the potential surface water supplies that would be available for transfer. And then the next task would be to estimate the potential sustainable groundwater production that would be available for transfer to Felton water system. And then we would, um, he would evaluate the alternative scenarios, such as looking at alternative water supplies that might be 
that might be available. And then um, optimizing the San Lorenzo Valley Water District conjunctive use for existing sources that we have now and optimizing the San Lorenzo Valley Water District conjunctive use of the existing sources for Loch Lomond. And then optimi optimizing the, the um, Loch Lomond for manager, managed aquifer recharge. And then looking at um, optimizing, these are, these are mostly for optimizing the San Lorenzo Valley Water District sources. So we have three separate sources. We have the north, we have the north system that has surface water sources and groundwater sources. We have Felton, which is on a surface water only, and then we have the south system that's on groundwater only, and so these would be optimizing all of our internal sources first. And that's gonna be our priority, is to first make sure we have all of our own sources optimized so that we're using our water sustainably. And, and um, with specifically looking at fish flows and trying to make sure we have adequate fish flows during drought periods for, um, for ecosystem services, and then um, and then the next and then the next part of the um, scenario, his his assessment would be to look also at looking at um, optimizing the San Lorenzo Valley and Scotts Valley conjunctive use possibilities using Loch Lomond and using um, North System sources or Felton System sources. So those are all surface water sources. And then, um, and then the last, the last task is to report and have a findings report, and then we would, he, then this the, the consultant will be um, looking at environmental review and water rights filings and working on the conjunctive use plan. So a lot of this is what John had already presented, but this is kind of more of the details about what the consultant would be doing in the analysis. Thank you. Um, any other, any board um, or other staff comment before we, uh, before I comment perhaps? Um, I, I just have a question um, about the water rights questions. I mean, obviously that's not something that Nick Johnson is going to do. That's not his area. But he's, is he going to re uh, include a review of the current situation? Is that his? Well, he, we may need to ask him for some of this assessment mm -hmm. in order to do the ne negotiation for the water right. Okay. So he may be participating in that negotiation. Uh, but on the technical side. Yeah. Right. Okay. Thank you. Um, oh, first of all, I want to express, uh, express extreme confidence in Nick Johnson. I've uh, been coming to water district board meetings pretty regularly for, oh, since beginning of 2014 and some before them in which Nick presented. Um, has one of the most complete urban water management plans that I think any of us has ever seen uh, in 2010, which was updated for 2015, mm -hmm. and the 2009 water supply master plan. Okay, it was, it was a very useful document, um, you know, and is cited in his list of accomplishments. Okay, in the in experience here, it's a document that you can find online. Um, Nick is also going to be participating with the JPA. Um, the JPA is, has had two major tasks, one of which is to select um, a consultant to evaluate the existing groundwater model there, and uh, the JPA ended up with a decision, and I'll let John correct me if I'm making any mistakes on this, um, is um, we selected an outside the area firm, and both uh, San Lorenzo and Scotts Valley are going to uh, have some consultation uh, with you know, other firms, Nick uh, Exponent and um, Nick being the principal in that, for a second opinion and a, um, a check on the results of this new firm that are um, that is from outside the area and Scotts Valley is likely to do the same thing. So I and I believe uh, the whole board and staff have a uh, very high confidence level in Nick, um, local uh, motivated, uh, to work for the benefit of the San Lorenzo Valley um, and um, a very professional individual. So, um, I, gu I guess I'd like to ask this one question on this, um, the, 
the water the wildlife conservation board grant is independent of the 330 other the prop one money right it's the same. It, oh, this is a piece of the yes. Yes. okay of that okay um, and so our fifth potential fifteen thousand dollar contribution would be one piece of matching okay you look the match. right. okay thank you so, um, please um, so will and this is I guess a, a question for um, for Jen will the scenario analysis take a look at other water management options like the potential impact for the benefit of uh, individual rainwater catchments on a larger scale or recycled water in Scotts Valley and its reinjection or the feasibility of, and I ask this because it comes up often in conversation, um, the, the feasibility of additional above ground reservoir storage. We do not anticipate any, um, any of those things being covered in okay. this analysis. <clears throat> oh. the, you know, those urban water management plants are really based for areas that are growing, like San Jose, and, and this is really not an urban, urban area, and people don't want to see it become an urban area. And I actually believe that nobody's really going to use that. And the data for, um, and no, we did not know about this $280,000 extra charge. We just knew about the grant money, as far as I, I knew about that we got a grant to pay for all this stuff, which is, which is okay with me, but I just don't see that this is a worthy expense. And I, I, I disagree with, um, doing all these more studies and I'd rather see the money go to um, engineering and design of uh, you know water storage and water facilities instead of these studies I don't think it's necessary to, all the data is pretty much already there um, to um, evaluate and to build infrastructure to that end so, so I'll, I will be voting no yeah. um, just a response on that one this this branch um, and the, the projects associated with it will let us use infrastructure we've already spent money on, namely the intertimes. So we, we put the pipes in the ground, they're there already. Um, and this is one step on the path to be able to use them in non-emergency scenarios. So it's, it's, I think it's, it's, we're, it's leveraging money already spent and capital that we've already got in the ground. And the two hundred and eighty-five thousand dollars is absolutely something that we were we were aware of. It's part of a routine requirement that any grant come with matching funds. Those matching funds can be in-kind services, in-kind work, or projects that are already qualified and, and in alignment. So this is work and expense and effort that the district has already embarked upon that qualifies as a match for this grant. So we are leveraging what we have already done. The work in this assessment will allow us to use the inner ties, which will allow us to be more efficient and more effective, protect the ecosystems, protect the fish, and protect public safety. Could we get a little bit of a breakdown, maybe before the 285, at least some of the pieces, okay, uh, are coming from? Some of the 285,000 that the district is using as match funds is for the, the money that we spent on the inner ties. For, in, in, for the construction of the inner ties. So that, that, that money's already been spent, okay. and that, that counts as match towards this grant. Okay. Does this mean we have some more potential matching funds available from our contribution to the inner ties that could be available for future grants, or? Um, Probably not. not. We're, we're, time is running out on that because the money's been spent, so. Okay. The further away you get from that time that you've spent that money, the less likely you're able to use that as match. Okay. But the vast majority of it is, is entered right. time so money. Right, so we were still spending that money, we were still paying that money as we were applying and <coughs> getting granted this grant. So we were, that was part of this process. Like during the time frame that we were applying for this okay. grant, we were using that as the, as the match. Okay. 
Okay. Um, how about Jean? Well, maybe you can clarify this, Jack. This goes back to the uh, JPA. One of the things that was discussed at the JPA is um, different member contributions. And one contribution, I believe, was some of some of this grant money will also be part of our contribution to the pool at the JPA. Was that floated? And the, perhaps the hydraulic, the, the, the basin um, report from the Scotts Valley was suggested early on in discussions about something that might be part of our contribution at Scotts Valley contributes to the groundwater model they currently have mm -hmm. um, as a starting point for, instead of starting from scratch. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't know if, Chuck, you were at that, uh, probably the first or second meeting of, of the um, groundwater agency that was mentioned. Um, nothing was tied down, but um, that again, some of this money, uh, you know, some of the enterprise was also paid for with Prop 50 money. Yeah, Prop 50 money. So I just think this is tremendous leverage, but specifically to the Nick Johnson um, thing, that's a value added proposition because this guy is such an expert on our watershed. And there's no getting up to speed. He's already. Um, a real expert on the local water situation, and I've been really pleased with all the work I've seen that he's performed for the district, so I think he's a tremendous value. Um, I also wanted to make sure that um, the public was aware that an ur urban water management plan is a little bit of a misnomer, and maybe staff could elucidate. You are required by the state to provide a report called an urban water management plan, plan when you have over a certain number of connections. And it doesn't really speak to how urbanized or how suburban your area is. It's more about the number of connections served. Staff could be yeah, I believe it's 3,000. If you have 3,000 or more connections and you're required to do an urban water management plan, and it's basically just a way for you to plan how much water you have and how much you need to conserve in order to sustainably <coughs> use your water. It's and, and it also, by completing the urban water management plan, it, it makes you qualified for a, a being awarded grant funding for projects. So if you don't do your urban water management plan, you're not qualified to receive grants. Or loans. Or loans. So the urban water management plan is kind of something that's really critical for this district. You just made the point that I was going to make regarding the mandatory nature of that. We got around it in one time, okay, in which another agency uh, was the lead for us in this, uh, something that you cannot continue to be um, doing in the future. And we weren't able to get grants at that time. Right. We could not ourselves get grants at that time. But that's, that's the, the state made it that way, so you're listening to people from the state that make these rules that don't make any sense and you follow them, it doesn't make any sense. Okay. Um, so, um, any other, any public comments at this point? Um, Mr. Fultz. Bob Fultz, appreciate the background exponent and the principal. How many responses did you get for the RFP? We had two responses. And what was the fee for the other one? 60000 And so the difference of fifteen. was there a reason that the other one was not responsive or somehow did not meet requirements or just somebody we don't know and we want to do business with people that we know and are comfortable with? No, we know very well all of the applicants and the other applicant was a, a partnership between two other consultants that we often work with. And we just, we, we looked at all of both of the application proposal or the proposals and really the description that Exponent provided really more closely fit what we were looking for for this uh, work. So the other, the other team would not have accomplished what was in the statement of work in order to be able to have a successful outcome. I, I, my, my, I, I can't speak for others who were on the team, but um, my feeling was that the other, the other um, consultant had proposed sort of a different path for getting some of the same, same reporting, and I felt like the, the, um, 
the information that Nick Johnson has had and has access to and the way that his his reports come out would more closely fit with what we're looking for for this project. With the information the other guys have asked for been wrong or not usable or anything like that. I guess what I'm trying to get at here, and I, I'm not going to be able to point anymore since I think it's clear which way it's going to go, is, you know, that is, I mean, 15,000 here, 15,000 there, it, you know, it adds up over time. And so um, I think part of what needs to um, be communicated to the public is, you know, really precisely the reasons why, other than we like him and we know him, and he's done work for us before and that sort of thing, that's all great. But as my old sales manager said, what have you done for me today? Right? Yeah. And so that's <laughs> so that's the um, that's the thing that I operate on. If in fact he has a lot of this information, I would have thought he could have done it for less than sixty thousand dollars. I mean that would have been my going and saying, Well come on, Nick, you're you you got all this information. So anyway, I, I understand where we're coming from and, and how we do business. Um, uh, well I, can I say something for that? Sure. Can I speak to that? I just remembered one the first task is um, is to complete a database. And that was really one of the more expensive items. And that database is going to be really valuable for sure. us in future for future planning processes and as well as for working with the Santa Margarita Groundwater Agency. So I think could somebody else the groundwater... agency been able to contribute some money? I mean, maybe we could have given Scotts Valley a call and said, hey, we got a 15 thousand gap here and it's going to help you. Um, I yeah. think that will come up in future discussions. What have we done for us today? <laughs> I want those conversations today. You're going to benefit from this, uh, Mr. Scotts Valley. I Scott Valley, I want. But anyway, the other, the other comment, Bill, I, I fully appreciate where you're coming from on the. Uh, uh, don't, don't cut me off yet. <laughs> on the um, regulation part, I, you know, probably the way it was 100 years ago was too unregulated. Maybe we hyper-regulated ourselves too much now. Maybe there's a middle ground here. But you're right. I mean, part of it, the system we have right now, the people that win out of it are a lot of the consultants. They extract an enormous amount of money out of the taxpayers and ratepayers before there's a single piece of pipe or a single tank or a single pump installed. And it's really a shame. And hopefully that's something that um, the state might work on. I mean, heck, they're even talking about deregulating marijuana sales because of the black market that's out there, uh, or at least reducing the taxes on it. So, hey, maybe they can do the same thing for us. Small little water companies that don't have a lot of the uh, same overhead absorption rate that uh, a bigger city like Santa Cruz or San Jose has. Ms. Norwell. Hi, uh, Barbara Norville, Ben Lerner. Um, this is to uh, Jen. This is um, back in January when we sat through the fish ladder meeting for two hours. One of the key things that we talked about for at least an hour was data collection, the data collection repository. I mean, you know, they talked about Excel, they talked about all these other things. And it looked like the data they were going to try to collect in the fish ladder uh, statistical analysis looked like it was valuable. How is that different from what we're spending with this 285, and why can't those two be combined? Because I, if I'm, if I'm, I think I recall that the fish ladder was a sixty thousand dollar project. The fish monitoring. The fish ladder. The fish ladder uh, monitoring again. Gal come in that gave us a presentation on January 30th. Oh, again, that wasn't the fish ladder. That was just fish monitoring. Monitoring. Okay. Yeah. So it looked like they were already out in the streams and the rivers and collecting data. Yeah. How how. How can these two be overlapped so that the money being spent out of the left pocket is combined with the money being spent out of the right pocket? Well, I think that's a really good question for our next consultant when we talk about the oh, fish consultation. <laughs> <laughs> this one really is more about hydrological situation. It's not really about this, this particular consultant is for the hydrology. Okay. I just, I'm just thinking, you know, as long as you're at the river, you know, why not look at all at one time, you yeah. know? And Instead you know what, I will make sure I have a good answer for you. Okay. At the next, great. Thank you very much. All right, Laura, play again from Ben Lillman. Uh, I want to make sure I understand this completely. What is the total assessment? The assessment that we're discussing. The grant? The grant is $330,000. And how much are we expected to pay from San Lorenzo Valley? So we have agreed to match 
$285,000. And a big portion of that is covered by the intertime that we already spent. Uh, and, and you're talking about revenues from water rates? We are talking about, about how much it will cost us to match this grant, right? Yes. So it's the, the funds that we've already spent for the intertime. Yes. And, the other, so and, a lot, and a large portion of it is from the Gold Bennett um, Bull Bennett Pipeline Replacement Project, which right. we already intend to do. Yeah. Okay, so what is the incremental or additional cost in terms of the rate? Is there, any, is there going to be a, 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 an actual incremental cost in addition to the rate rates that we're paying now? No. Okay. It doesn't change the rate. So out of the $280,000, since this is a regional, uh, Santa, uh, within the Santa Margarita uh, Spegba uh, boundary, why aren't we splitting this between the city of Scott Valley, the county, and the San Lorenzo Valley Water District? Why are we being held uh, captive to this one, uh, this particular program when it really benefits the whole, everyone that's on, in Spagbot? Santa Margarita Groundwater Agency. You want me to answer that? I'll be and, and before I, before you answer that, I, I, I really think, in all fairness, it should be shared and not be put on the backs of the existing repair. If you're going to be doing a regional water agency, it should be shared. Definitely. Okay? So, so let's, let's control our cost. It's, it's getting really expensive year after year here, and we need to start thinking financially on what these projects incrementally are costing us. One last comment as I leave. I'm really totally against the expense that you are allocating to public information through a consultant. Different subject. Thank you. I got a question. <laughs> um, you want to make a an comment? Just a quick you? question for Jen. Well, look, um, well, at this $285,000, we already spent, is what you're saying. Part of it. Mm -hmm. Part, how much of it? I don't have it in front of me. I, is all of the two so, I mean, already earmarked? All of it's two projects that we plan on. Okay. Yeah. But the public never voted on this expenditure. expenditure or these are already. It's not an additional expenditure. They want you to match. They have different criteria that you can match. For monies that we already spent on the inner ties are allowed to go towards that 285 number that we have to hit. Other capital <coughs> projects that the district already plans on doing is going to fill up that other $285,000 requirement. So there's no additional money that the district wasn't already planning on spending being specially allocated. So is the public voting on spending $285,000 or not? Or are they, we already spent it? It's earmarked for, to be spent it's or earmarked. has already been spent. So we're voting, voting on the public is so we're, we're voting you're, on You're that. voting today whether or not you want to spend an extra $15,000 to get Nick Johnson as the hydrologist. Fifteen thousand. Fifteen thousand. Mm -hmm. But we we are. At most. We at but most. we spent the other two hundred eighty-five thousand minus fifteen thousand dollars. The the matching the, the matching portion of this project is coming from capital costs mm -hmm. that we spent on the inner type projects that will allow us to do conjunctive use in the end and capital components on a project, the Bull and Bennett Pipeline, that will allow us to maximize our conjunctive use ability in the Felton area to ensure that Felton has water year round. Because right now, Felton is actually running short in the summer months based on the permits we have, and we want to strengthen Felton's water availability. So the matching funds are coming from capital components, the majority of which have already been spent, and others which we have to spend anyway on capital components. So, uh, in other words, two hundred seventy thousand dollars went to capital improvements that are a part of this two hundred eighty-five thousand. Now, in other words, we just get credit for the funds that we're already spending or have spent. We're just getting credit for. It. We're getting credit for those capital improvements yes. to, to the tune of two hundred seventy thousand yes. dollars. And then, you were voting on fifteen thousand dollars to this consultant to do yes. those studies. To do seventy-five thousand dollars worth of work. Yes. I, I thought it was fifteen thousand. We only have to pay fifteen thousand. Uh, maybe okay. fifteen. Okay. 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 Um, other public comment. <laughs> anybody? I don't see um, anybody raising their hand on this item. So, I bring a 
please. Jay Gomez, Buckland. Um, I was just today reading the um, Ethics Committee report and it's really a great document and it seems like so much of what would be required um, of them to do in this study, you know, he's already got the foundation of that. Um, it was done before, I guess, Felton was acquired by San Lorenzo Valley and so there are some gaps in there that definitely need to be filled in, but it just seems like he's extremely well qualified um, and able. And like I said, it's a, it's a great document and I would encourage the board to Thank you. Other public input? I don't, I don't see any. Um, I do have one really quick question. Go ahead. So, I have to admit, I'm still confused about how much money the district's actually going to have to come up for. Jen, you're saying that a big portion is covered, but we're asking for what's the number and you don't know that. What? Oh, yeah. Um, I'm wondering if, I didn't read the recommendation, I don't recall it, are you tonight approving a $75,000 contract, or are you approving maximum $15,000? Right, it's a little confusing. Yeah. It is. The grant covers $60,000. We have $60,000 from the grant that will cover this particular hydrological assessment. And that's a guarantee. And that's guaranteed. Okay. That's our, that's, that part is already paid for. Okay. And then we get to decide if we if we want to hire Nick to do it, it will cost an extra up to fifteen thousand dollars, and it might be less. And the that. motion tonight will be to for the board to approve a maximum of fifteen thousand, possibly less because you're still negotiating. <coughs> but it is not going to be to approve a proposal for seventy five thousand. No. Yes. Well, 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 yeah. yeah. We just don't have to pay for it. We pay the sixty sixty thousand dollars is paid for by the grant. Fifteen thousand dollars. By the district. Well, so the proposal then, or the motion, should be accepting the proposal for seventy-five on the condition that sixty thousand of it is covered by a grant, right? Yes. Because if it is not, you're not doing seventy-five. You're only doing That's right. Okay. Okay. John. It seems that. Uh, we kind of look at it the wrong way. We have this $330,000, and then we have a sum of money that's already been spent because we've done capital improvement, and we have capital improvements earmarked, already budgeted. So we just need $15,000. I don't think we can get a better deal. <laughs> well, then you pay for it. We, got, yeah, hello. we only have to come up with fifteen thousand dollars to spend three hundred and thirty thousand dollars more. So we get this we get it. this grant money is really wonderful. And the fact that we have the urban management plan, which has been a long time coming, is making it possible for the San Lorenzo Valley Water District to participate with the big guys and get the state's money, because there's money. You know, I take advantage of every tax break I get. I bought an electric car, because I got a big tax break. You know, these are, grants are better than tax breaks. So um, I will fully encourage the board to support the 15 grand that we need so that we can have the, the assessment done and get that finished and spend the grant money and free up uh, information for us to use for decades. Uh, this isn't just some flash in the pan. This is long-term knowledge, and it's going to it's going to really help form future capital expenditure plans, so that we know uh, what grants to apply for in the future, so we have grants for actual construction things. So, uh, once again, encourage the board. It's a, this is our time. Thank you. Other directors? Okay, I'll close out public comment at this point. Um, other directors have any comments? Um, do
Just, oh, I see. just as a final, I just want to reiterate that I, everything I've ever seen that Nick Johnson has done has been really high quality and very, more important, very useful to the district. Um, and I think in this particular project, because of his sort of foundation of familiarity and his technical skills, um, I, I don't know about the other people, but I trust staff to have made the distinction between the two. Um, I, I can't speak to them, but I can't speak to to Nick's qualifications and the quality of the work he's provided in the past projects. Um, it's a short timeline. I know that he can meet that timeline and that the project is going to be high quality. So I would, you know, I, I feel very confident that he will do an excellent job. Uh, this was, I mean, I, 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 I thought this was really confusing on the agenda because I was under the impression that it was we were voting on $285,000. I think we can do a better job to put it on the agenda so it's clear on exactly how the money and what we're voting on. Um, please. I found staff's report perfectly clear. And further, I want approval of contract with Exponent where $60,000 is covered by the grant and or the majority of the proposal is covered by the grant and up to $15,000 will be covered by the San Jose Valley Water District. I will second that motion. Any other uh, director comment before we vote on this? Um, seeing none, um, Holly, would you call for a roll call vote on this? Yeah. Um, director Radcliffe? Yes. She director said yes. Bruce? Yes. Yes. Oh, thank you. <laughs> director Tomala said yes. Director President Hoffman? Yes. And we have one director absent. And one director absent, that's correct. Okay. Um, motion carries um, um, four uh, in favor with uh, one person absent. So let's move on to the next item of new business which is the California Special Districts Association call for nominations. Um, any staff? I'm really no that? staff information on this item. The board's discretion, staff does not have a recommendation. Board does not need to make a decision. Is there anyone on the board that's nominated? No. Or nominate someone else. <laughs> Pardon? Or nominate someone else. Um, yeah. I, I don't have the time for this at the moment, so I'm not, and I don't, oh, any, anybody wants to speak up, they're welcome to. Um, yeah. Perhaps I'm more interested in, if, you Okay. Um, would the public like to comment on this item? I don't see any. Um, we're back, and I believe there's no action needed to be taken with this, so. Uh, let's move on to the next uh, item on the agenda, which is the Redwood Mountain Fair. So uh, this is an item that um, we've con uh, funded many times. Um, I believe we might have a, somebody from the public who could speak to us and their experience with us having participated in this in the past years.
connection to the board and uh, it was brought up to the board that perhaps the water district would like to provide the water for the fair so that we could provide free water so people wouldn't have to pay for a bottle, so people wouldn't have to, you know, they could fill up their own cup or their own water bottle that they bring. And the district was willing to do that as a public community service, supporting a nonprofit organization that has so far given away $300,000 to 20 to 22 local community service, nonprofit, school groups as a direct benefit from the proceeds from the fair. It's not just a party that we're putting on. It's a fundraiser for all of these incredible organizations from Valley Churches United and Mount Community Resources to local preschools to the Boy Scouts to, you know, pick them out. They're all being represented and they're all gaining from the fair. So it's very exciting. And um, one of the big things is that free water. I mean, if it's, a fair, if it's a hot weekend, the people are drinking that water and they love it. It's, they're drinking SLV water. They're not drinking bottled water that's been packaged somewhere else and got all hot in the container and adds the, all those wonderful chemicals to your water. And your water is great water and you put it out there and plus you have the opportunity to uh, have a demonstration or information available to the community because it's, there's a booth and they can see it. So it's a really good thing. So grateful for it for the past eight years. It's possible to do it again this year. We would be eternally grateful. Any questions I hear? Thank you. Um, questions from any other directors first? Um, any staff? Um, I think that this is a tradition, okay, um, at this point. Um, I think it's a good place for us to uh, have a contact point with the community. If people have questions or want to know how to get in contact with the district, it's a good place for us to have a booth there. Um, and it certainly, uh, you know, sends out a worthwhile message that it's good, better to drink good tap water than it is to uh, spend extra money and uh, cause the pollution problems with plastic bottles. So I'm I'll in favor. I'll make a motion that we approve. Uh, okay. Um, well, I'm sorry. Um, okay, uh, let's take public input. Yes. Then you, then I'll turn to you as soon as we're done here, uh, Mr. Folds. Yeah, I think I think this is a great idea, and actually, I think this is something that the district ought to do more of. So there are other events that are put on by nonprofit community groups, all our members, from the pre Fourth of July, that sort of thing. I think the district ought to be providing free water at all of those events. Um, because they're all great ways for the district to get its name out there for these nonprofit community based organizations. I realize some of them don't all raise money like the Valley Women's Club does for very, very worthy causes, but it's still a great idea to do. I think the district should be doing more of that, including if there's any volunteers or equipment or anything like that that can be offered. I think the district should do that for the, uh, for the other organizations as well. It's a great way to continue advertising uh, the SLV Water District's presence in the Valley. Thank you. Yes, Deborah Long. So, as a sideline to this, but in relation to it, last October, because of a lot of public meetings before then, there was questions on giving, gifting public funds. And a lot of things were besides the education grants and the sponsorship of the garden fair and various things. And I believe the board, the, the district's attorney, Nichols, offered to write something that would explain how the district may distribute district funds to various nonprofit organizations. That hasn't been done. It's almost a year ago that this discussion first came up, and since last October, since you offered to do that. I think that's still a really good idea. This whole proposal is a little confusing to me, and I'm not going to talk about the merits of whether it should be done or not. I am a member of the Valley Women's Club. I support a lot of the work they do. But on the other hand, the recommendation comes under a strategic plan to increase civic engagement. Last year, it cited the strategic plan for forming strategic partnerships. So it's a little confusing why we're doing it. The 
other thing I'm concerned about is that the sport is improving $1,500 every year, I think, for the past eight years. It's been the same amount, and yet just the cost of renting the generator often runs more than that. So the district, besides the equipment, the labor, I know it says there's no overtime, but there is regular labor included in this. I think it's important for the board to have a really good idea of how much money we really are promoting on this for civic engagement. And it's important to me as a member of the public, and I believe to a lot of other ratepayers, to have a really good idea of exactly how much we are putting into this project. For instance, you also donate money to the garden fair, also for civic engagement and for environmental reasons, but you cut a check to them for $2,500. And I'm wondering if maybe it would just be cleaner to cut a check to Valley Women's Club for $1,500. That way it's perfectly clear how much the district is putting into this. And I also have a question on water at Roaring Camp. I believe they must be a customer of SLV already, right? No. They, they are not a customer of SLV. They don't have water on site that you could perhaps buy. I'm just thinking, is anyone looking at, I know you, this is a tradition, you've always done it the same way. But again, that would be solved by just cutting a check. And then for the attorney to answer the question, the purpose of the Red Moon Mountain Fair, as Ms. Macy has said, it is, is to gather money that's distributed to nonprofits. And is that a function of the Water District? Thank you. Thank you. I can answer one of those questions. One of the first few. Please, then. I just wanted to say that we would love to be able to use Roy Camp water, but they don't have enough. Their, their pipe system is that it's really, really old. So we aren't able to do so. So that was a, you know, definitely something we approached them about. And um, so I just wanted to let everybody know we have just come to the district, you know, in hopes of that. And um, uh, the district does get um, public acknowledgement through our publicity and on the posters and stuff. So um, if that's also a good thing about it. Just added that. Thank you. Good, good comments. Thank you. Mr. Casolas. Um, I have gone to these Redwood Mountain Fairs over and over and over again because I help work there. And I have noticed a great response from the public because they have the water there. And people are just, they marvel at the fact that to buy a 20 liter bottle of water at a basketball game costs them $5. And yet they can bring their own cup repeatedly and fill it with Felton's fine water. The San Lorenzo Valley gets a lot of good kudos that way. They're not only helping with the actual water, but they're helping to build community. Now community is the backbone that makes the San Lorenzo Valley strong and stronger. It's extremely valuable. It's not something you can put a price on. People who say nay or people say, oh my, not me, are missing out on a great reward of the community. When I put myself out there for things, I get so much from that. It gives me, I mean, you know, who knows, I might suffer de from depression, but it wasn't for all the things that I try to do to help build community. So I would surely encourage the San Lorenzo Valley Water District to keep thinking community and, you know, put the little signs out there and run that pipe. The only thing that really worries me is that somehow people manage to drink the whole 500 gallons. And sometimes late on a Sunday when there's still some pretty thirsty people. Now, I understand that we can't just take it back and fill it up because it has to settle or something. I think the molecules get all excited and then they need to calm down. Uh, but it would be really nice if we could find a way to plan so that at the end of Saturday we might be able to top off the tank or at least add 100 gallons or so. That being said, I'm looking forward to another wonderful Redwood Mountain Fair. 
uh, it certainly is is a, a lot of fun. It's very exciting. And, and anybody who hasn't gone, you should make the effort to be there because it's not just about the music or the food or the crafts. It's all it's about all the Beltonians and San Lorenzo Valley people and people come from far and wide. And they see how nice it is up here. And it's good for us. Thank you. I appreciate <laughs> uh, <laughs> the solace uh, passion for the uh, Redwood Mountain Fair. Uh, I also agree. I think it's a good idea that we are generating, we are donating water, free water to the uh, the event this year. Uh, I think it's a good idea, and uh, I still would like a uh, I, I think there is a legal question that's still lingering that we need to find out. You know what the definition is in terms of uh, how water districts or any special districts are actually donating uh, and how far we can go and where the line is in terms of donating to a nonprofit, and what the implications are. It would be nice to have some kind of legal opinion from our district uh, council. But I think generally, I think it's going to be a good idea, and uh, I'm all for it. Thank you. Thank you. Any other public comment? I don't see any. Um, would you? Uh, well, I'd like to make a motion to approve the cost not to exceed $1,500 to provide drinking water and a generator to the Redwood Mountain Fair. Okay. Okay. I would like to second, but I'd also like to make a comment about the excellent display and <coughs> work that staff has done at the festival in past years. Um, I think it was great to have some of the district materials there. And thank you to staff. I think it was Jen, and I don't know who else was there, but I know she was there for many hours. But I think it's an excellent idea, so I'll second that motion. Okay, thank you. Is there a comment? Um, then I'll call for this uh, vote as a voice vote. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, um, the motion passes 4 to 0 with uh, one absent. Thank you. Um, let's move on. And the next item on the agenda is the Integrated Regional Water Management Disadvantaged Community Involvement Grant Agreement. So I'll let staff. Couldn't shorten that if I tried, and I did try. I apologize. Um, the district participated in a grant application that was um, initiated by the Integrated Regional Water Management Agency. and. The primary purpose of the grant was, or the grant funds, is to assist disadvantaged communities. Um, the district has a state recognized disadvantaged community. It lies in Boulder Creek. It's roughly east of Highway 9 and north of Two Bar Road. And one of the things that we can do to help that disadvantaged community is to ensure that it has adequate fire protection. The way we do that, or the way we start to do that, is to determine what the pipeline sizes and storage sizes for fire protection in that area need to be. The first step in that process is to actually develop a computer simulation model of our water system as it exists today to determine what flow rates are available for that area. And then we can start to build out the system sizes to determine what the ultimate size of each pipeline and each storage tank will be. Because of the disadvantaged community's relatively small area, the entire north zone benefits because water systems, water is for the most part non-compressible. Anytime you push water at one point, you impact its water at the other point in the system. So we actually have to model the whole system to make sure that the disadvantaged community receives the most benefit. And so we are going to get the benefit of having a water model for the entire north system through this grant. This is a grant that is a non-matching fund grant. We are going to get 70, 000, roughly $70,000 to actually develop this model, to hire the engineering firm to develop this model. Um, there is no matching requirement on our part. So there will be administrative requirements. I will be doing administration for the district's engineering efforts on that part, and the um, IRWM will be doing administration of the grant itself. So fortunately, I get the fun stuff. I get to do all the, all the computer work, and they get to actually manage the contract. It's a win-win for me. I love it. So staff is requesting that the board authorize me to execute the agreement with the Integrated Regional Water Management Agency for the management of a disadvantaged community grant 
in the tune of roughly $70,000 to develop a North Boulder Creek fire flow master plan, including a computer simulation model of our water system up there. Okay. Uh, Mr. Smolin. <clears throat> Yeah, yeah the, this district de desperately needs a, a computerized modeling um, computer system. And good job, Brian. For, I think this is an excellent, fantastic start that we could, um, you know, get this moving forward. Um, so I mean, this is this is great. So I think um, it's just it's just extremely helpful for water systems to be able to. It, it is with any any sort of business to to. to to get up to date with technology and use technology um, so that you could, you know, figure out what exactly you need, where, when. So this is a great start. Please. Just a quick question on how long it will take to have before we have the great unveiling of the computerized model. That is a good question. I am Hopeful we will have initial results sometime later this calendar year. Um, it would be nice if we could get results at the end of summer, but I'm going to hedge my bets and say sometime in late fall. Just endorse my colleagues. I think it's great that we got this grant. Um, I think it's going to be really useful. And again, something that looks like um, we've leveraged. Um, a grand opportunity to help a larger part of the whole district. So I think it's a great opportunity. Right. I, I guess I am in, uh, intrigued by and pleased that okay, this is useful for the entire North System because it, the North Boulder Creek area ties into the whole North System. Um, does this cover all of the modeling cost or how much of the modeling cost of the North System needs? Um, so my experience, I have, I have decades of experience in computer simulated modeling using a variety of software programs and the $70,000 based on my experience should be enough to cover the North Boulder Creek area or, or the, the North Zone. The North Zone. The North, north system. system. The North System. Thank you. Okay. That's very good. And then in order to get the entire system modeled, we'll need to do other things at some time. I'm probably looking at an additional $70,000 um, contract with a future engineering firm to add on to the existing model for the rest of the system. Okay, thank you. It's great to get half of our entire system modeled in this way. Paid for, the cost of that model and paid for in this way. Um, any public input on this item? I don't. Did, oh, did I see, okay. Oh, Mr. Holloway. Um, I just have a quick question. Uh, Brian Lisa, Integrated Regional Water Management Agency, but is, it, is this a private foundation or is it a, is it a, a group, in, you know, from water agencies or, well, it's an Integrated Regional Water Management or what? It's, it's not an agency, right? Go for it. Uh, it's the Regional Water Management Foundation, which is a subsidiary of the Community Foundation of Santa Cruz County. I'm actually on the Regional Water Management Foundation board. It's a sort of a partnership of both public agencies and the, the nonprofit community foundation. It was set up when Integrated Regional Water Management first came out and when Prop 50 funds were available. The state only wants to contract with one entity in a region. So we set that up as the hub entity to receive and administer the funds and then distribute those funds out to the various partner agencies. Where do they get their support? Their support comes from uh, from the grant funds. The administrative costs are built into the grant and then also the partner agencies all contribute an annual amount to the to the effort at, a, at an amount of about $80,000 a year. And they do that via the community foundation? It's a subsidiary of the community foundation. All right. Um, any other public input? Oh, Mr. Lee. Yeah, just a uh, quick question. Um, what was the criteria for uh, deciding the North Zone versus any other zone in the SLBWD district? What, what's the, what was the criteria? The, the whole grant is set up to assist disadvantaged communities. Our only disadvantaged community is in the North Zone. 
So the way to benefit from that grant is to look at the disadvantaged community and model the North Zone to supply water for the DAC. Okay, so it's based on income and then other, and other uh, issues such as for the number of trees in the region or something? <laughs> it's, it's, it's a state criteria based on income, average okay. income in the area. It's an income test. Okay, thank you. And cost of living for houses, or is that part of the... In the I area? do not know the details on how this... Yeah, I don't think so. It's see. based on the uh, census data. So yeah. you look at the census blocks, and if the average median income is below a certain level, then you're considered a disadvantaged community and show up on the map that the state maintains. Okay. Thank you. Um, but I hear a... I'll close out public comment on this, not seeing anybody else. Um, would anybody like to make a motion to authorize the execution of this agreement? I'll make a motion to uh, authorize okay. the, uh, this agreement. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, to execute an agreement execute. with the Regional Water Management Foundation. Yes. Okay. It's, as the subject matter of this memo says. Um, anybody else want to make a second? Or? I'm happy to second this motion. Okay. Um, and not seeing any other discussion desired, um, I'll call for this on a voice vote. Um, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, passes four to zero. Okay. Um, so that closes out new business for tonight's agenda, and we move on to unfinished business. And that is the fish monitoring in the San Lorenzo River. So I believe there has been some um, activity, okay, um, since the agenda came out. There has been, well, there's been activity since early this year, um, at least in January, probably even earlier than that. Well, there's been activity all along, actually, for months. But after the January meeting, staff uh, regrouped with the various agencies that have been contributing to the fish monitoring program in the Santa Cruz area. And we've been working to develop a game plan going forward in terms of the feedback that we've received from the community and regarding the, the biologists that are serving on this. For, I'm going to call it a technical advisory committee, but I know that others on the committee don't actually like to call it that, um, to develop a plan moving forward. So. Just recently, since the publication of um, the agenda, the agencies have coalesced around the idea of continuing the fish monitoring program for the 2018 year. Um, and as I understand, the contract currently with Don Alley extends to June 30th, so we are looking to have a new contract starting July 1st. And I'm looking at John and Jim for confirmation on that one. So we still are in the process of developing what that monitoring program is going to be, how it's going to be paid for, who's going to contribute to that, and where it's going to go. We're going to come back to the board at a future date with a proposal to seek more funds for the fish monitoring for the 2018 contract. Um, and we are also looking to further refine moving forward after the 2018 year because one of the concerns was that there's different monitoring methods and switching from one monitoring method to another monitoring method has the potential to disrupt the database continuity. Um, I believe we should probably do multiple years of double funding for getting comparable results from different variations of monitoring so that we can do a good cross analysis. It's, it's more expensive, but I think the community has spoken and they've made it very clear that this is a very vital component of the Valley and this is what the community wants, and so I'm willing to go forward and try and develop a program and a plan that allows for us to work with the state and the feds and give them the information they need to grant us the permits and give us the rights and abilities and make sure that we can move forward on our efforts for not only the water that we receive from the, from the ecosystem, but also in supporting the fish and making sure that they are on an upward trajectory, which is ultimately our goal, instead of the downward trajectory they've been on for the past X number of decades, unfortunately. Um, I'm gonna pass it over to John and Jen and see if you guys have anything to add to that. We don't have anything final yet. I wish we did, but we don't. We're still working through this, but staff has been working with the other agencies for quite a long time now. That seems like it covers it. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, 
you brought this okay, uh, item to the agenda. So. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, anyway, my understanding, and Director Bruce uh, prefer that uh, at the January 23rd meeting, we discussed, you know, this is after uh, the presentation with the, uh, with the board by Ms. Kittleson, that um, she would um, consider developing a, a cost for, because she, she's been all along has been proposing this database, website, et cetera, um, work for the fish monitoring. And she also elected to say that um, to stop the fish sampling for 218 so she could somehow get this work done. So um, Mr. Lou Ferris came up or made the suggestion that can we um, get the, uh, an estimated cost for this work? And that, I'd like to ask, when is that cost proposal going to come? I mean, I, I, I'm kind of sort of concerned that it's already been two months that we still don't have some sort of cost proposal, and we also don't have a sort of definition. Actually, my opinion is this should have been done before the you know, canceling um, Mr. Alley's contract should have, should have all been looked into beforehand. Um, so, I mean, I would like to, I would like to know when exactly is Ms. Kittleson going to come for, forward with a proposal and definition for this data, database website. You want to take yeah. that one? Yeah. Um, first off, the, the decision to evaluate the data was a joint effort. It wasn't just a decision by Kristen that was working with the overall committee. Um, we do have an estimate of what the cost to do that evaluation of the data and where we go forward. The estimate's about $51,000. Um, it's still, you know, it's a ballpark estimate because we haven't fully scoped it out yet. We're still getting the data into the system and see what's, you know, what shape it's all in, how the data can be related to each other and that sort of thing. So it, it is a work in progress that's, that's ongoing. Um, and we'll be working, working back with the, uh, with the committee on that as, as the information comes out. And I'd like to follow up on that. And I also believe that all the boards considered the stakeholders need to have that $51,000 in consideration for this extra work and to vote basically on this because it's an expenditure, it's a change of the way that uh, your money is being spent for this fish monitoring. So that all, that all the various boards should be informed that they should, you know, I'm, not, I'm sure you don't have this plan actually finalized out, but when you do, that that information should be distributed to all the boards and those boards in turn should vote whether they accept the increased cost, whether they, they want to do, which it sounds like the most boards do, um, want to uh, continue the fish sampling um, for two, 2018. Um, and, and all the issues involved with that issue. I haven't met anybody, um, quite frankly, that does not want this to continue. And actually, it, it just seemed, did, it did not make any sense to me not to take data for 2018 at all. Because you can take that data, take that data, and just because you can't enter it, just because you don't have this fancy database with thing, whatever, you can have that data and you can enter it in at a later date. So, anyway, I think we should follow procedures with this and that all the boards you know, get that information of the increased costs and they, all the boards should vote on it. And those, those votes should be weighted since we're San Lorenzo Valley District, Water District's 30%, you know, we would count for three votes. And, who, and all the other boards would pick percentage and then a 50% would go uh, towards the, the thing. So, the public's boss. <laughs> you know, we're just directors, so we, you know, we take your input and, and so, but at the end of the day, the public, you know, it's your money, so, you know, we need to hear from you so that we vote and correct that thing. But, you know, I just felt that, I felt that we were kind of making decisions on this, 
without public involvement. We were pushing it through. We were going to we were going to cancel the um, contract with uh, Don Alley and Associates without your involvement. So I'm just I you know I believe that we should we need to bring this out to the public public meetings, vote on it. If you want if you want to pay the extra fifty one thousand or whatever for this website or whatever, then you know. Uh, that we do so. Thank you. Well, thank you. Um, we'll definitely take a lot. There'll be plenty of oral comments. I um, appreciate your um, offering one. Um, I'll just take a bit more of board discussion, and then, then I'll open it up and uh, hear from everybody. Um, anybody? Well, I just want to say I appreciated um, John's comment about the, the, the recommendation that came from staff, came from this, this group, the, the group's vision. And I, I understand their concern about their priorities being different because they have a longer um, range approach and that it was a financial decision um, in part and clearly that the public, uh, including our ratepayers and apparently those of other agencies, so Hill Creek among them, um, have expressed interest in this and I, I, I agree. I think if people are willing to um, you know, support the extra cost, it, it's a very good idea. Um, we're coming into the budget season, it seems like this is the kind of thing based on past year's expenditures, that is the kind of thing that Stephanie can probably ballpark and get into the budget planning process. Um, but I also respect, you know, professional staff recommendation. I think, um, you know, it's, it's hard to be in either or situation and that if, um, the additional expenditure is supported by our ratepayers. I think it's a good idea. But I also, you know, I, I understand their desire, staff's desire, to improve the the entire structure of the system in the database. I think that's also very valid. Yeah, I, I, I would echo some of uh, my colleagues' comments on understanding that staff's recommendation or staff's desire is to have a clear and simple path forward and appreciating that we are adding to staff's burden. I also want to acknowledge that I think it's important that we continue the monitoring, expand the monitoring as appropriate for covering both uh, the database and the, the fish monitoring. Um, I also wanted to mention that, that I had the benefit of some ex parte conversations. I had a, a correspondence with a gentleman Mm -hmm. um, uh, Brian Ashley, who spoke very eloquently about his desire to see this continued, and I just wanted to disclose to the board and the community that there was this correspondence with uh, a person of, who had a considerable interest in this topic. I agree with that. We all received, okay, that came to the board, and I, uh, Mr. Ashley did uh, make a, a very uh, eloquent case for this, and so have others in the public, okay, regarding this matter. Um, I, I do feel uh, uh, that continuity of data is important. I'm especially intrigued by the idea of okay, um, you know, doing it in two different ways for at least one year in order to um, look at um, you know, a way of uh, perhaps changing it and seeing if, uh, if that was uh, a more standard um, data collection technique from other agencies, whether we would have continuity of data across uh, from the past into the future. Uh, I appreciate that idea. Um, and I, I do appreciate staff, uh, you know, taking the, our inputs as a board and the inputs of our communities into account um, and uh, working on a way of accommodating um, community desires and, um, you, know, you know, expanding the scope of the work that some people need to be doing, hopefully with the funding that supports that to a large degree and makes it not too onerous to do so. So um, unless other members of the board would like to comment again, I'll take this to the public at this point. Um, would anybody like to comment on this? 
Uh, the, the woman who I get cut off. Let me let the, <laughs> <laughs> oh, come, come the second time if you wish to. Okay, for the, to be the second speaker. Um, my name is Bruce Ashley. Oh. Uh, I'm the one that wrote the letter. Yeah, I think it was the first one. And I'd like to commend the working group for their uh, insight in deciding to continue the monitoring. string of information that tells us what the uh, fish uh, populations have done. And I, the only other thing I'd like to say to, to those of you that are here is that going forward, um, the resources that, uh, that Don has developed over the years um, are, are valuable to the new efforts, whatever they happen to be, whether it's a, evaluating a new protocol or um, developing some new resources or developing some new personnel, whatever that evolution looks like, I think Don's critical and his advice is going to be critical and his cooperation is going to be critical. And so whatever animosities and tensions have built up, through the process and over the years, I'd hope that uh, everybody here could work together and uh, come up with uh, good plans uh, that utilize all the resources going forward. And for next year, I would think that it's, at this stage, it's going to be difficult to find any solution that doesn't involve Don. And uh, hopefully. Thank you. Any, um, anybody else? Please, Mr. Collins. Kevin Collins. Uh, I have some idea of what these uh, variables are. I mean, these various types of sampling are. The Department of Fish again apparently has a preference for what they, I think, called ratifies uh, random. In other words, it's a statistical variability issue where you have to go, first you have to survey the entire stream system, categorize, and then toss dice, pick your sampling spots, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, and then go back and actually do the sampling. It costs way more. This district will be shocked to find out what it costs. The city of Santa Cruz tried it uh, and stopped because it was so expensive. And now they're not participating now in the current uh, sampling that the Soquel Water District agreed to continue. I think it would be uh, foolish not to uh, have this uh, incredibly long and consistent uh, sampling record. I think it would, to have it interrupted uh, because the county is busy trying to invent a statistical analysis database which I think is a good idea, great. I mean, you have, it's one thing to have reams of Excel files. It's another to, to be able to cross-reference them and draw some information out of them. And that, you can't do that with a file of paper. That's what computer software is about. But at the same time, you have the separate issue of whether you're going to continue sampling while that's going on. And I don't know if the county, I, I don't understand much about what they're up to, but <laughs> These are two separate things. You can decide to fund the county, help the county proceed with its development of this uh, cross-referenceable, I presume, database. But you could also, regardless of that, continue this uh, uniquely long, consistent record, which includes habitat conditions, temperature, all sorts of factors that are in place now. It would be, I think, a mistake not to continue it through this season. So Kel, which is the second most most important sizable watershed in the county, has already voted unanimously. They just want yes, yes, continue it. They voted to fund it. So to not continue that through this year would be a mistake. Or the other issue of participation in the county's project is is a separate decision. And I think once everybody realizes what this other form of sampling is going to cost, and the way it will disrupt the continuity of, di of data information and 
fact that they aren't cross-referencing. That's a whole separate thing that somebody's going to have to untangle, and it's not going to be easy. But it's very simple to simply continue the record through this season, which is what I'm recommending. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, Mark Lee uh, from Belmont. I have to uh, really agree that the old uh, technique, the more methodical, slower method for doing sampling, and the creek has benefit. The data that's been collected historically is very important. It, it may be slower, it may be a little bit more expensive, but you're letting the database drive the data. Okay, there should be a way of integrating the, the, the databases if we know databases, and we, a lot of us do. So I think the results, I think it would be uh, 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 really unfortunate if we break off the sampling techniques that we've been used to gathering. And I think we should maintain that relationship Take the data that's gathered, plus the baseline, integrate it with the existing counting model, and make the tweaks and necessary program arrangements to actually have that data running alongside. And I think that's all I have to say. I think we should continue Don's efforts. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Nancy Macy, and I have a different hat on. Um, I'm chair of the Environmental Committee for the San Luis Valley, which is a project of the Valley Women's Club. And um, I'm absolutely thrilled at what you are working for and working toward. Uh, the new database is going to be remarkable. You'll be able to go online and see maps, and things will pop up, and you'll be able to get data about where the fish are and what they're doing, and how many there were, and how many little ones there were, and how many big ones. I mean, the, the potential is enormous just for the public and the community to be able to understand. And also to guide the extraordinary decision-making process that every single water district and the county and everyone else has to go through um, in, in whether it comes, to, whether it needs to restore a particular spot on the creek because it's so important, or whether it means you, can you build a bridge here or is it a bad idea because of the picture, whatever. All those decisions would be much easier to be made. So that data system is extraordinarily various agencies together to work together. Uh, the resulting, uh, what we just saw, having an extraordinary amount of money come to the district to solve some really major problems and to make it better for the district as well as for the fish. This is huge. You guys are doing remarkable work. Um, I'm very grateful for that. And um, the fact that you are throwing back in the mix the added burden of keeping the monitoring going for 2018 is really significant. Strongly support that. That's what started this, was the worry or the concern that by losing that year, you're losing the stream, that the connected data that would make a difference over a period of five years, several years in the past and several years in the future. So um, thank you for this effort and for what you're doing. And um, again, Let's make sure it happens in 2018 and making that transition. Thinking about that ahead of time. Um, thank you for coming together on that. I appreciate it very much. Thank you. Other public input? <coughs> It, it helps with our recording so that okay. we can have good minutes. I just minutes. wanted okay. to ask about the idea of interns or graduate students to help uh, mitigate the cost, the fifty one thousand dollars we've, we've been using them and we're using them right now. Okay. All right. So that, that, that does help. That's all I have to say. And, um, yeah, you, someone was speaking to the tune of uh, when you were talking about, at, what was it, X Factor or X? Exponent. Um, how you know what good work he does. He's you know worked for you guys for 20 plus years, and he puts out really valuable, useful information, etc. And I just and I can't stress enough 
what a good, loyal, um, and John is a boss, I should say that, but he really is such an environmental steward within the county, and he lives in this watershed, and he really cares for the fish, like, more than anyone I've ever met. And um, he's also working with uh, Winnemum Wintu up in the Shasta region, um, trying to help them bring fish back and bring um, Chinook back to the watershed. And um, he's just such a, he's really an amazing environmental steward. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Don Allen, I live in Brookdale. Uh, the only reason I came to that was to hear what Brian had to say, and I have to, happened to be in the restroom when you said it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> would you mind repeating what you said so that I don't have to get it hearsay from someone else? I'll let you finish your comments, and I will repeat myself. Uh, well, I'm not sure what you said. It sounds like the county is going to administer the sampling this year. No. 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 Okay, so, so I need to hear from you. All right. So let's hit a pause on the clock then if we could. And the agencies that have been funding the program, we've, we've just recently all committed to say, okay, let's do the fish monitoring for 2018. Let's get a contract together starting for July 1st. That's about as far as we've progressed. So now we're working at the details. Who's going to monitor? Who's going who's to administer it? Who, who, how are we going to coordinate this amongst the agencies, excluding the county? So it's the agencies working together now. The county's going to be focusing on the database. They're going to be focusing on doing that work. So this is external to the county's efforts. And so because we are kind of a, a hydra or a headless hydra, I don't think that it actually exists, but we're, we're trying to figure out who's going to take the lead, who's going to actually administer the contract, and what the contract's going to be. So we have a little bit of time to figure that out before we come back to the various boards and seek their approval. So, And also, I mean, the city of Santa Cruz is actually contributing to this one, too, as well. So we've, we've actually added partners to the coalition. Well, they've, they've been funding it for quite a while. Right. But I mean, it, it's, it's we're all working at it now together. So it, 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 hopefully it'll come out relatively soon, but I'm going to hedge my bets on what soon is. But we, we know we're working up against the June 30th deadline. So you're going to try to have one contract? We don't know. Okay. That That's, you know, SoCal has its unit. Is, it, SoCal has said, we'll unilaterally do this. Um, I was originally thinking we would unilaterally do something. All the agencies have been talking together. And it's like, okay, if we're all going to do it. Let's see if we can't get some economy of scale. And that's where we are right now. I had one question about the uh, city of Watsonville and the Corvallis watershed. Are they required to do monitoring in 2018 because of their water diversions? Do you know? I don't know what their requirements are. Okay. That was one thing I, did, I didn't know about. Yeah. They may have had to do it anyway, whether others did or not. Yeah, yeah I'm, not, I'm not sure what their requirements are. All right, well, good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, any other public comment? I don't see a hand up, so I'll close out public comment on this. Um, back to um, any other discussion? My only question was, you just answer it. What, what is the time frame for a proposal? And I think I heard Brian say soon, which means before June. Yes. Okay. Um, yeah, I do too. Thank you all for doing this. Um, and trying to work out a solution to this? Um, uh, yeah, my question is, when does it sampling typically, to, to Don, when, when do you typically start sampling? Uh, um, we start looking at habitat in August. Um, and then we start sampling usually the last week in August and go through September and early, early October. Okay, so if we, if, if it gets decided before June, it wouldn't impact. Uh, you would be available at that time. Say again? You, you could be available, okay, if you were, okay, a participant in it, which, um, anyway, the June, the June, de the June, the June time frame is, 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 not a, yeah. is not problematic for this process. No, well. there have been some years when the, the county has run into problems, and I started doing the work before they actually had the contract. Before they had it approved by the county uh, supervisors, that's, that's not a problem. We have a big concern about not getting paid. <laughs>
Okay. Um, I don't hear that we need to take action this evening. Um, we'll look forward to okay coming back soon. Okay. Um, okay. Um, thank you. Um, there is no uh, other unfinished business on tonight's agenda. We have um, two items on the consent agenda, Min minutes from one board meeting, and a license to discharge well water into Hanson Quarry. Um, would any um, director want to? I, I would need approval of the two consent agenda items. Okay. Um, before I do so, I'd like to take public input on whether um, any member of the public would like to comment or um, request that a director remove, uh, pull something from the consent agenda. I don't see public comment on this, so um, I'll second the motion. Oh, you didn't? Okay. So we have a motion and a second. Um, any inclination not to improve the, the consent agenda? Since I see none from the directors, um, I'll call for that on the voice vote. Um, all those uh, approving the consent agenda, say aye. 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 Any opposed? No. So. Okay. Um, and thank everybody. I know some people who were uh, came for our last item. I appreciate people coming this evening. So, good night uh, for those who have left and uh, anybody who does so in the near future. Um, we have district reports at this time. Um, I'll open this up to the four districts. Um, I, either way, I mean, I can take some, get the, get the action, and then people know what to comment on. But don't let me forget about that. Okay. Um, so, um, District reports. So I'm going to start with the administration engineering department status report. Um, this will also be an opportunity for you to comment on the operations report if you have any questions regarding that. But the main thing I want to focus on is um, the district has been moving rapidly over the last three years on a capital improvement program. Um, we've, we've been building it, we've been developing it, and I'm happy to say that everybody in the valley needs to get their hard hats because um, this valley is going to be under construction really soon. I did a quick list of items that are going on right now for this year's worth of work, and I came up with immediately 16 items. Um, we just released a request for qualifications into the wild this week for as-needed engineering services to begin the development of plans and specifications for the projects that we've included in the USDA package. Those projects are listed on page 104 of the board packet, and we are looking to hire those engineering firms. Hopefully I can bring a, a proposal to hire three firms back to the board relatively soon so that we can get these engineering firms on board to start developing those plans for submittal into the USDA packet. They'll work in coordination with WSC. We also are going to be releasing a request for proposals for the North Boulder Creek Fire Flow Master Plan, which we recently discussed this, this evening. We have already have a contract with WSC for a USDA bid package for $5 million worth of capital improvement programs projects. Those are going to be in development for next year's CIP work, but we are going to be doing design work on those uh, next year and the following two years, hopefully. We have one, two, three, four FEMA projects that we are currently working on in pre-design or design phases. Lion Tank Access Road, Highway 9 at Brookdale, Two Bar Road, Shady Lane Water Main. Those are all FEMA projects based on last year's winter storm that we are currently in active design or pre-design on. We have also design work occurring on the Felton Heights tank replacement. That is a part of the USDA package, but we are moving forward on some of that design work or pre-design work right now. We have the Posse Temple Well 6 Rehab and Posse Temple Well 7 replacement projects. Those are actually out to bid on the street right now or will soon be out to bid to get contractors bidding on those projects. We have the Fall Creek Fish Ladder Debris Removal. That project has almost been designed. We've got just a little bit more work to do on that one. We are going to be bidding that project this April um, or May for a July 1st start date. We have uh, environmental restrictions on when we can actually get into the Fall Creek area for debris removal. That is actually also a FEMA project. 
Um, and that is to remove a lot of the damage and fix a lot of the damage that was done to the Fall Creek Fish Ladder area and intake during last year's storms. We are going to be getting a PRV standard for the district. WSCF contracted with them to prepare a standard pressure regulating valve replacement and also working with um, Rick and operations to develop a standard for lateral replacements. We are going to get that package together, combine it, and we are going to issue a bid package for two PRVs and we're hoping 60 laterals in the Long Pico zone for the assessment district. That is going to be um, a contract that I'd like to get out maybe in May, starting construction in May. I'm, ideally, they would finish through the June, and if they're doing a good job, we would like to consider extending that contract out for next year's budget to do another two PRVs and maybe another 60 laterals so we can get that ball rolling in that regard. We have the swim tank, which is bid ready to go. That is part of the USDA package. As soon as we get an authorization from USDA that we'll get funding for that, we are going to be hopefully bidding that one again. That probably will be bid next year. And we also have the blue tank project, which the blue tank had um, structural issues with it, and the board authorized us to replace that tank. We are hoping to have that tank constructed this year, this fiscal year, before July 1st. So we'll have that tank replaced as well. And I saved the best for last. Um, probation tank. That is a, a albatross, a dead albatross that this district has been dealing with for any number of years. I am happy to report that the plans and specifications for the replacement of that tank went onto the street this week. We are going to be looking at bid opening in April and we are hopefully going to probably have a special meeting sometime soon with the board to have a recommendation to award that contract to a contractor to begin construction of the probation tank starting this fiscal year. We have, we have met the goal and we are going to get it done. In addition, staff has ordered and the poly tanks have been delivered for the probation tank because that tank is so critical to the district that we need to have water storage there. We have temporary tanks on site that will be installed and set up in the next few weeks, which means we are going to decommission the probation redwood tank in preparation for demolition. In hopefully by April, the probation redwood tank will no longer exist. So we are moving forward. We are under construction, and I'm very proud of this board and the effort it's gone through over the last three years to get us to this point. Pipes, pumps, and tanks, we're jamming. Let everyone else worry about other things. That's what we're focused on. I'm done. Wow. Um, let, let me t I'll take public input on each of um, Okay. Oh, okay, go ahead. Um, do you have any sense of what the bidding environment is like? We really got hammered last year um, on the swim tank. Is it any better this year? Or have you not got a sense of that? It is better. It's not, uh, it's a bidder's environment, not a buyer's environment. In terms of the contractors are very busy. We've done a number of things on the probation tank bid package that we did not, were not able to do on the swim tank. Timing is one thing. Getting ready and starting construction in the spring is a lot better than starting construction in the fall, especially with you know, the rainy conditions and the seasons that you don't know about. We've also extended the construction schedule for the probation tank, giving them more months to get the project completed. We have reached out to a number of contractors and a couple of them came back and said that they would love to bid on the project, but they're too busy and they aren't sure they could meet it in the timeline we were originally thinking. So let's add a few weeks. I'd rather have good money bid and give them a little, a few more weeks to get the project done and see what happens there. So we're, we're trying to make it as competitive and as um, bidder friendly as possible, shall we say. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Um, hearing, not seeing any other hands up from the board, let me go to the public. Uh, Mr. Fasolas. I'm John Fasolas from Felton. Um, hey, I'm concerned about the wood from the probation team. I was going to ask. And I got to tell you, that wood is very valuable. And if one of your contractors takes it, then they should compensate you for it. Or you should find a buyer for it on the open market. Because that wood is very valuable. Jack on here. <laughs> okay, that's my comment. It's, it's a... <laughs> right. It's a... <laughs> I, I, and, and so here's, here's how I'm... My, my mind processes that concern because redwood is very valuable. That's deep part redwood. It is a little bit on the probation tank. It's 
Probably not as valuable as other tanks around here, given its condition, but the contractors have to give us the lowest responsible bid. And so if there is any value in that tank that they could take to reduce our bid cost, they're going to do it because they need to be the lowest dollar figure. I just want you to make sure that they are yeah. you know, giving that consideration. Yeah, they are, they are businessmen. They are looking to make sure they get the bid. And the only way, if, if selling the Redwood helps them lower their cost to us, they're going to be doing that. Okay. Or build the boss's deck. <laughs> <laughs> you can build a nice deck up there around the new tank. <laughs> All right, well, okay. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Anybody else want to? Hi. Ms. Um. I I seldom agree with that person from Felton, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> uh, we tore down one of our old tanks, and we got money for that beat up redwood. So he's right. You ought to make sure you're getting some value out of that redwood. I mean, I don't know how bad your probation tank is, but our tank must have been 100 years old and probably not as big. And we got about $5,000 for it. Thank you. Anybody else? Um, I don't see other comments. Um, it's a unique object. Um, it, um, It'll be an end of an era when it um, goes away. <laughs> anyway, um, okay. Um, any other okay just, comments? Just for? one correction: the first one, the, the, the meetings of note, it was um, actually the finance committee um, rather than the admin committee. Oh. The second. I, I got it right on the second on the Bear yeah. Creek Estates one, but you're right. The meeting of note was a budget and finance committee meeting, not an admin committee, and I correct. Okay. Um, so, uh, by department, uh, finance is next. Any interim? Um, it's our standard, very complete, um, something like 33 okay, pages. Um, it's in the packet. Um, I encourage everyone to review it. Um, I'll ask, first ask if directors have any comments on it. Um, any member of the public want to comment on anything in the Finance report. I don't see any. Um, move on to environmental reports. Um, Jen, would you like to comment on anything in them? Or? No need to. I'm just uh, in case the opportunity. Um, okay. Um, we've, we've covered a lot tonight. Okay. Very well. Um, any director uh, questions? Or anybody from the public want to comment on the, the environmental status report? <laughs> I don't see any. Um, so, thank you. Um, that closes out department status reports. Um, the rest are committee reports. Um, oh, 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 operations is there. I missed. Um, the operations report is here. I don't see Rick here tonight. So Rick, I mean, Rick got a pass. I, I okay. Um, Celebrating his 42nd year anniversary with the district today. Wow. Um, I don't have any questions about this. Um, any operate the public want to com comment on the operations report? I don't see any. Um, exactly. Good reading. Um, so uh, move on to the rest of the uh, district reports. Um, committee reports. Um, first item in this is future committee agenda items. Um, anybody want to suggest perhaps for other committees or anything that they address anything? I don't see any. Um, would the um, public like to comment on future committee agenda items? I see none. Um, so committee <laughs> meeting notes and minutes. Um, all the minutes are in here. I don't have anything I wish to okay, add to budget and finance, anybody else? Um, anybody in the, okay, public want to comment on committee meeting notes? Just one really quick thing. Um, I just want to say thank you to Holly for getting the recordings embedded in the minutes so that once all that starts getting posted on the website, I'm hopeful that her public records requests 
will go down dramatically because people can just go to the particular agenda item they're interested in and click on it and listen to it. So thank you very much for doing that. It's a great event. Um, thank you. Any other public comment on the committee meeting notes and minutes? Um, seeing none, um, director's reports. Um, I just I had one um, other, I, I guess you might want to call this ex party communication. Um, and this is directed in, in part in response to Mr. Pasolis's area of interest. Wearing my, the hat for my day job, I had a meeting with the executive director of the Monterey Bay Community Power Agency, so our community choice aggregation entity. Uh, no. <laughs> and um, one of the items, well, first off, um, folks should probably know that um, the, the community choice aggregation was launched effective March 1st. Being one of their industrial contracts, the water district is now effectively one of their customers as of the beginning, the first tranche of their customers. And um, in addition to other conversations, I also let him know of my relationship with the water district and opened the door to future conversations about exploring whether there were opportunities for locating uh, renewable energy generation sites on the water district, or in any case, having an open dialogue with um, district staff, the district board, at some future time when they've got their legs under them and the doors open, just to let them know we're interested in hearing what we can do to support their efforts and what they can do to support ours to become a zero carbon um, water district in the future. So, John, the door is open now. Um, well, the GSA um, is at the position that we've um, solicited uh, statements of qualifications from firms on two categories of items. One was on facilitation um, and the other was on updating the groundwater model. The facilitation, there was no decision made on accepting um, a firm for facilitation and those will Num three firms will be coming in for interviews um, towards the end of April. Um, and then hopefully from those interviews, there'll be a, a choice on that matter. Regarding the groundwater modeling, um, there were four firms that were responded to the statements of qualifications. And one of those did not do a particularly good job. And that went it down to three. And of the three, um, one was Exponent, who was um, discussed tonight. One was Hydrofocus, who has worked uh, with, uh, with various firms in the Valley. I can't remember them all, but recently with Scotts Valley to a significant extent and um, with doing some of the work on getting uh, the basin boundaries um, set up for the Santa Margarita Basin. And then another one from, I believe he's from Davis, uh, Hydrofocus, yep. but anyway, an out-of-area uh, out firm. So the, the choice was to make Hydrofocus had a very good um, um, statements of qualifications and the choice was made to go to, with Hydrofocus and it's um, very likely that Scotts Valley will um, utilize uh, uh, hydrometrics for evaluation of the product that comes from Hydrofocus and we will do likewise uh, with Exponent. So this is a good, I think this is a good selection and it also um, benefits I believe the GSA in the sense that we get another firm familiar with the basin, and as we've heard tonight, it's good to have lots of firms that um, have a lot of local experience. So in, in addition to having hydro, um, hydrometrics and having Exponent have the local experience, Hydrofocus will also be moving in that direction. And the, for the Budget and Finance Committee meeting, we're moving into um, the season for evaluating, you know, looking at the budget. Um, we also, there was also a special meeting of the Budget and Finance Committee meeting at Bear Creek Estates in which um, I think it was a very productive one, but one of the topics coming to the Budget and Finance Committee meeting um, in the near future will be looking at how the sort of overhead allocation costs uh, that Bear Creek Estates, um, you know, what is the right share for them to uh, be con uh, contributing to the rest of the the, to their enterprise fund, to their section of the enterprise funds. So um, that'll be on the agenda. And um, 
might be other ones. I, I could probably be uh, talking to Stephanie in the near future about whether anything else should be coming on the agenda. So, um, any other comments from any other comments from the public on uh, uh, any of agenda items or okay, committee items for that matter? And I see none. So, oh, I do see one person. I just have a very simple question. Are you going to introduce us to the gallants between Stephanie and Molly? <laughs> uh, this Do we want to? Does she want us to? <laughs> <laughs> this is Chelsea. She's an employee of the district. She's uh, Holly's going to be gone for the next meeting, and so she's getting cross-trained so that she'll be able to do the recordings for the next oh, meeting. Okay. Just didn't want to ignore you. Yes, so, her name's Chelsea. She's in the front <laughs> office. <laughs> Thank you, Barbara. Okay. Um, the We'll move on from the director reports, or from the, uh, from the district reports and move on to written communications. And just note, we have uh, four email communi four, three email communications and one letter uh, in written communications. Thank you for, uh, if you're here tonight, for having submitted those. And there's six items in informational materials. So, um, this concludes our business tonight, and at 9.05 in the evening, uh, oh. I'm sorry, I forgot to do this. I was so engrossed when people were talking before the meeting, you know, on other subjects. It's really spaced out. Um, I am sorry, I plan on doing this again in the future. So I apologize for that. Um, I just wanted to Starts at 10 and it ends at around 1, and then there will be a hike to, even in the rain, I think, to go out and look at the Olympia. So it'll be a real eye opening experience for anybody who gets a chance to go. Thank you. Sorry. Okay, so um, at 9.06 uh, in the evening, I'll adjourn this meeting of the San Lorenzo Valley Water District Board. Thank you for coming. Yeah.